Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Dr. Weefer. I'm just in my library, relaxing, reading a couple of books, and I'm reviewing something I took some notes on. It's called the Q10 Temperature Coefficient. This is something that they added to the AP Biology curriculum a few years ago. At first glance, it may be a little intimidating looking at the equation, but hopefully after this video, you'll have a simple step-by-step -step approach so you can answer any Q10 question that comes your way. All right, so what is this Q10 business? Well, Q10 is simply the measurement of the change of two metabolic rates, R2 and R1. Now, I'm going to stop right here. I'm not going to get into the equation just yet. First, you need to know and do a mental checklist that you know a couple of things. First, what is metabolism? Metabolism is the sum of all chemical reactions in an organism. These reactions are going to really control body temperature. These reactions are going to control the rates of metabolism. These reactions are going to control the rates of heart rate and circulation and things like that. So when we talk about uh, these situations, we're going to be talking about two types of organisms, ectotherms and endotherms. If you think about what the word really means, ecto means outside and therm, like a thermometer, has to do with heat. Ectotherms are going to regulate their metabolism based on the outside temperature. Endotherms are going to maintain a constant internal temperature regardless of what the temperature is on the outside. So an ectotherm is going to be an organism such as an amphibian or a reptile or a fish or even a small animal uh, that which is of considered a water flea called Daphnia, which we're going to do an example problem with. Endotherms are organisms like um, humans and mice and all sorts of animals that are um, that are going to be considered warm-blooded. So if you heard of the terms warm-blooded and cold-blooded, it leads you in the right direction of what ectotherms versus endotherms are. All right, so now let's talk about rate. What does rate mean? When someone says a reaction rate, they really mean how quickly something is happening. So you could think of the rate as a slope. So if the bottom uh, was time and the, uh, the x-axis was time and the y-axis was how the reaction is proceeding over time. If it's increasing over time, that's going to be a rate. Okay. You could also look at the rates of reaction are increasing over something, like in our case, temperature. So the Q10 value uh, for this line is going to be much greater than the Q10 value of this line. Okay. So let's get into the equation right now. Q10. So Q10 is going to be over 10 degrees, like I just said, and it's going to be two reaction rates. R2 is the second one measured, and R1 is the first point taken. And they actually correspond with two temperatures. R2 corresponds with the T2 temperature, and R1 corresponds with the T1 temperature. So the equation in full is Q10 is equal to R2 divided by R1 raised to the 10 over the T2 minus T1. Now that's the confusing part right there. So if you are given two points and you have to plug these into this equation, it's not so bad, but this is what you would do. Uh, here it would be a graph. And say they only gave you the points for 10 degrees and 30 degrees. This is the heart rate or beats per minute of, a, of the Daphnia, which is the water flea. So on the y-axis right here, okay, these are the beats per minute. On the x-axis is temperature in degrees Celsius. So if they give you the points 10, if you look at the point 10 and it looks like it is going to go up to about 50, and if you look at the uh, 30 degrees, this is going to correspond to about 200 beats per minute. So if you plug into the equation, Q10 is going to be 200, which is the second point that you read, divided by 50, which is the first point of the metabolic rate, and you raise it to the 10 over the 30 minus 10. Uh, 10 over 30 minus 10 is going to be 10 divided by 20, which can be reduced to 1 half. Okay, now that's a step that you can do, but don't worry. Uh, hold it right there. Don't worry, because we're about to uh, look at this, how we could do it a little bit easier in just one second. So uh, the answer is going to be 4 to the raised to the 1 half power, so the Q10 is equal to 2. So what does that really mean? That means that over 10 degrees, it is going to change by a factor of 2. In other words, it's going to, every 10 degrees, the metabolic rate, in the case of the heart rate beats per minute of Daphnia, 
is going to double. If the Q10 was 1, that means that it stayed the same. If the Q10 was 4, that means that it quadrupled. All right, so let's go back to this for one second. Let's look at this graph. Okay, this in this case, it shows you data points taken uh, over a series of 10 degrees to 30 degrees. So if you know all these points, why not make yourself a little bit easier? Make your life just a little bit easier, okay? So imagine if this exponent right here was 1 instead of raised to the 1 half. Now, you know that anything raised to the power of 1 is just itself. So imagine all you had to do for this equation was just divide two numbers. Well, this is uh, the simple approach that I was telling you about. If you're given the graph, and you or if you have the opportunity by looking at a table table to have the free choice of choosing any data points, don't be a hero, people. Don't pick two points that are 5 degrees apart. Don't pick two points that are 30 degrees apart. Q10 is looking for over 10 degrees. As a matter of fact, that's what this exponent does right up here. This, this factors in that whatever two points you have, it's going to consider what the rate is over 10. It automatically fixes it. But why don't you fix it first before you plug it into the equation? Why don't we look at looking at um, 200 and 100 right here? So if we look at 20 degrees, which is corresponding to 100, and then 30 degrees, which is separated by 10, which is going to correspond to 200 degrees, isn't it a lot easier to divide 200 by 100 and you raise it to the first power? All you got to do is divide the two numbers and you get the Q10, right? 200 divided by 100 is simply 2. Now, that gives you the same answer. Wasn't that a lot easier? On a test like the AP Bio exam, they may give a range of um, acceptable answers based on your um, error in reading this. You just try to be as close as possible. If they give you exact numbers and you plug in the equation, well, sometimes you just have to plug it in to get the exact value, okay? But if they give you a data table, okay, and you can choose the numbers, pick two that are exactly 10 apart. Like I said, don't be a hero. So sometimes instead of getting a graph or getting a data table or numbers, you may get a question that's conceptual based. It may ask you to really think about what Q10 means. Don't forget, if the Q10 is equal to 4, that means it quadruples for every 10 degrees. If the Q10 is equal to 3, that means it, the metabolic rate triples every 10 degrees. And if the metabolic rate doubles out of over 10 degrees, guess what? The Q10 is 2. So, let's read this. If a goldfish has a Q10 of 2.0, what would its approximate metabolic rate be at 30 degrees Celsius if the metabolic rate at 20 degrees Celsius is 15. So why don't you see if you could figure this out and I'll give you a second. You could pause the video if you want. <sighs> That's coffee for you. All right, so if you guys thought about this and you said that from 20 degrees to 30 degrees, it actually is going to double because the Q10 over 10 degrees is 2, then you would then you would realize that 15 degrees doubled, 15 doubled is 30. So if you pick 30, then you are on the right track.